Hey, everybody. Good evening. It's Ellen Lewis and Whitney Hi. from Crazy For You, and we are so excited you are here tonight. This is a super special episode of the podcast because we have Mr. Willie Nilly Nitz on for an interview. And let me tell you, this is going to be so much fun because he is flipping adorable, right? <laughs> Mr. Instagram sensation. When I first reach out, um, what? Three weeks ago, he had 60,000 followers. He's up to 100,000 followers. So he is a rock star. All right. So <laughs> let me bring him on. <laughs> Willie, hey. What's up with it? How you doing? Good evening. Hi. Yeah, we out here. <laughs> we are so glad you are here. So let's just do a couple things that I like to do when I have a fun interview. Quick answer. Okay. City or country. Um, Detroit, St. Clair, Michigan. Okay. <laughs> You're from Michigan. People, right. people always like city? think about like Detroit when I say Michigan. Like, no one knows where St. Clair is. It's like a half an hour from Canada. So I'm is way it up a here. Is it in the city or is it more country? It's, a, it, it's, it's rural, but it's like a small town, like the middle of like a bunch of land, like next to a river. It sounds like Thundertone. It does. Right? Okay. Morning person or night owl? Morning. All right. Straights or circulars? Circs all day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wood or metal? Metal. High end or budget yarn? High end. <laughs> Brights or neutrals? Neutrals. Garments or accessories? Accessories. Chunky or worsted? Worsted. In the round or seamed? In the round. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. okay. All right. All right. <laughs> that sort of gets everybody's juices flowing. They ready. Bit. Let's go. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. You know, I think one of the things people like, like most about you is your enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Your excitement. You can tell yes. you're so into it and passionate about it. You about can't knitting. fake this. You no. can't fake this, right? Because like, I just come from a knitting, I come from a, a teaching background. And you got to be more excited about teaching math than anyone else on the planet. You have to be the most excited person that anyone's ever seen about integers or graphing something in points of intersection. You have to be that person because those things on its face are not fun at all, right? So like, especially if you're gonna be teaching 12 years, you gotta make that, you gotta make that fun, right? So um, I just look yes. to bring that to knitting and bring that to craft and bring that to fiber because there's a lot of intimidating things when it comes to making something with your hands and the pressure of the internet and social media, making things seem like it's like, I made this in like, a Thanos snap, right? Uh, and like, boom, look, look what I got. And it's perfect. And like, nobody knows how many iterations or how many times you say them. Da, 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 da. And like, nobody knows that stuff. So people need a lot of encouragement, just in general. And it shouldn't be super taxing in the community to give that kind of stuff out because there's a lot of stuff that comes back to you tenfold. You know, I'm about that because that's what that's what my vision compels me to do. So, okay, let's unpack this. <laughs> you, you are such ah. a good interviewee because ah. you have so much going on. Okay, <laughs> you're you're a teacher by heart. That's in your yes. heart. Yes. So did you go to school to be a teacher? Is that what you studied? Well, I tried. Um, I went to a liberal arts school, um, D3 private school, University of Redlands. Um, I went in for teaching and I realized that they didn't see the light of day ever. So kind of switched out from there. I started at biochemistry. That was a mistake. Oh. <laughs> and then um, I went to um, liberal arts and like they never seen the light of day. And then like later on in like my my tenure, like, you know, like the beginning of like my junior year, I went for race and ethnic studies because I was thinking in my mind, let me go approach teaching from a way that's going to make me different, make me more appealing, make me more of an asset, make me more of value. I went to try to learn how people learned because i just believe anybody can learn anything you just got to find your way right so i went that route and um did a couple of uh, you know like lots of community service after college and things like that just to prepare myself for teaching and you know lo and behold it didn't it ended up not happening but teachers will always find a way to teach if it's your passion if it's your love if it's in your soul if it's in your spirit i think that's me like that's all i know i would do it for free if i could but i can't <laughs> but <laughs> but you can't i can't yes. Let's let's greet our viewers. You've got me so excited. I didn't let's even go. greet all my viewers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Hey, Glenn, and nice to see you. Hey, Suzanne. Hey, Jal. Ah, hey, Ellen. Gonna see you tomorrow, girlfriend. Hey, Terry. Hey, Polly. Let's see. Uh, he knows, she knows where you live. She knows all about it. Hey, Emily. Windsor. Oh, you up there. <laughs> hey, Glenn. <laughs> Windsor. It's up there. Whew. Yep. Hey, Jal. Yep, absolutely. Infectious. Ellen follows you on Instagram. Hey, Emmy. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate all of y'all. Thank you. There's a lot of y'all. All right. <laughs> yep. Hey, Ida. Hey, Kelly. Nice to see you guys. Hey, Patty. All right. So you learned to knit uh, what? How? Your mom taught you or? No. No. Okay. Very unlikely source. I was in college. 2007. Let me date myself there. So do the math. 2007. Um, You're not like that much older than me. What's that? You're not that much older than me. Hey, we out there. You know what I'm saying? It's just about how you got to keep the face youthful. You got to keep live, right? A little bit. Um, but yeah, I was in some kind of um, one of my classes for my major. I think it was like gender studies or something like that. And um, I had like this young lady right next to me and she was like knitting. She was knitting a scarf. Had the It was pink on the background, purple skull and crossbones. In Tarsia, what I found out later, right? Yeah. And she was a beast. She was just doing it and listening, not even looking at the stitches. Da, 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 da. And I was just like, yeah. I, you got to show me how to do that. This is amazing. Cause I've never <laughs> seen like, you know, like I, I came from the hood. Like nobody like, like did that. Like they maybe like, you know, big mama crocheted or something like auntie did the crochet with the hook, but I've never seen like right next to me, like, ah, killing it. I'm like, yo, I need, I need to know how to do that. But she didn't believe me at all. You know what I mean? Cause like I, I'm, I was a very different person back in uh, 2007. She you know, thought like, you were I, making fun of her. No, she actually thought I was hitting on her, low-key stalking. Oh, so really? it was a little Were you? What, was huh? she kind of cute? Was she kind of cute? Were you hitting on her? Yes, of course. You know, okay. um, you know. Right. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. I just don't I wanted I don't want you to slide on this, dude. Okay. Oh, not yeah, not at all. You know, it, it but it was funny, you know, believe it or not, I was so engrossed and enticed by like what she was doing with her hands. Yeah, I overlooked everything everything and like she totally thought like either this guy's gonna stalk me or like this is the lamest pickup line I ever heard in my life one of the two right and i bugged her for weeks like i stayed after class I, I i waited till she got there like you know like i was like when you go show me how to do this you know like when you go show and she finally like gave in after like you know almost 20 days it was a long time all right but i was persistent because i really wanted to know and yeah. i've never seen anybody else do this like I, I, I was dead set she ended up um taking me back to her dorm room she lived in an all-girls dorm um, on campus. So let's talk about like full on screen, full on screen, my name, where I was, driver's license, you know, everything but a DNA sample. Like they knew, like they had people going back and forth in the doors, doors was wide open. They want to make sure I was in earshot, ear, earshot and eyesight. It was ridiculous, right? I wasn't tripping. I, was like, I know what I'm here for, right? She had previously told me to go to uh, Joanne's down the street, get the boy needles that we were talking about before with some yarn, right? I didn't know what I was doing. I was in a rush. I was excited. I was like, yeah. Here we go, go time, right? Wow. And she showed me how to knit, cast on, and pearl. So freaked out, didn't even show me how to bind off. And just like, I was out. You know, you so like stop. all that. You summer, have to keep going if you can't bind off. <laughs> right. Uh, it, it was just literally like live stitches on needles. Like, I, I this, all right, you got to go. Uh, all right, bet, beast. Uh, <laughs> I'm out of here. But like that whole summer, like I was, I was in it um, and learning things and messing things up. And I got a couple pictures on my grid on Instagram, like uh, of the early days making scarves, you know. Um, seems not matching. I got the wrong side on the right side and everything. Like, but it was the beginning, and like I just had the vision. Like I, I, I was hooked as soon as I touched it. So, what was the first thing that you knit? I knit a hat. Um, no, actually, I knit a um, I knit a scarf, garter stitch, garter stitch scarf, nice little rectangle, Ooh, right? Yeah, just a little something, you know, because that's all I do how to do. I mean, purling was kind of weird. I'll chop the stitches and increasing, so it was kind of trapezoidal. It had some angles going on, you know what I mean? And I'm. <laughs> We all start somewhere, you know what I mean? And like, I tried to do a hat. I tried to join it in the round and it wasn't in the round. And um, I had to like stitch up some other things. So it looked like some Frankenstein stuff going on. I had pearl <laughs> sides on the outside. It was nutty. I still have it somewhere in the house. But like, you know, I just never forget that because that was a marker of where I was. Like if like the future me could have saw that and the, the like, past me could have saw like the future me now, they wouldn't believe it. Like you got all of this. What is this? So it's uh, definitely a journey. After, so after she initially taught you just the basics, like cast on knit and pearl, did you pretty much just teach yourself after that? 
Pretty much. Like, I tried to consume out. as much content as I could. And, you know, that was, like, when YouTube was kind of starting to get big or wasn't even, like, existing. Like, I, I got books. I got, like, I had people show me how to do stuff, going online, trying to find stuff. Like, how do I get better at this, you know? Like, with mm -hmm. what I have and what little money I have, because I was a college student, I was broke, I was poor, right? Eating ramen and things like that. Just trying to figure out, like, what I can do with what I had and, and make it as good as I could, right? You know, like, you know, you always make moms the, uh, and I just made flat pieces like forever. I made flat pieces for like three years or something, or something like that. You know, had to make mama like a little blanket, a little shawl, had the little tassels on there. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Made the Neapolitan blanket. You know, you got the vanilla, the chocolate, and the strawberry. What? <laughs> you know, we, we, we make it. They're like, I know how to make stuff. Like, let's go. I can, I can make you whatever. You know, and um, that, that was just like where the start was, you know, and, I guess I ended up teaching myself. I didn't have like a mentor, like, like how I want to be with other people. I didn't have yeah. that like for myself. And I always like say everything that I do, like, that's my intention. Like I want to be the person I wish I had. You yes. Know? That's like my Ellen. She, <laughs> yeah, seriously. She taught me. So I feel there you. you. I hear you. And like, I, I just, I love watching your videos. I actually, so, um, it was funny because I love when you do your videos on brioche and you call it like a brioche boy. And yeah. um, they were doing a brioche class here. And I was like, I would have never considered brioche before. I just, but that I had seen your videos for so long. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go take that class. And I really loved it. And then I'm really excited. And I wanted to have the piece done, but I was knitting some other things. So I, it is nowhere near <laughs> done to show you, but it made me no think worries. of you. I love it. I love it. I appreciate it. It's all about legacy. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's it's just so cool that you focus on I mean I don't know if you do it on purpose or what but it just seems like you're out there doing all the hard stuff. Like you know yeah. what people think is really scary and you're like I'm going to keep this from being so scary, you know? And Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I, I think it's it's that way because like you know we're literally spending our like our time which we'll never get back we're committing it to like the yarn and stuff we're spending money why not make the things that people want it just so happens the things that people like are the things that are the scariest brioche it looks amazing I don't want to drop nothing though like you know cable, oh I know right cool, yeah because right? I'm doing it it's no bueno no thank you I don't want to mess it up I'm it's scared. a problem right you know but I've always said like if you're gonna be a good knitter you gotta be a better fixer. You gotta be a better fixer. Right. It's you gotta learn how to. So good. But you gotta, you know, I'm all about like reading your knitting. You gotta know what those stitches are and how they're seated and all that. And you know, I mean, and then you can fix anything if you kind of know, like the structure of the fabric. Yeah. Right? And that's very but true. Wondered... You know, that's very true. And like, um, I, I, I want people to get to that place if they choose to get to that place. But let's face it, like the lot, the stuff that I focus on with people is like people that are very much introductory getting in the knitting, easing in, getting on the on-ramp to knitting. So yeah, like, wait, 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 wait. Brioche is not the on-ramp, honey. Brioche is well, the Autobahn. <laughs> you, I mean, for, I mean, in, 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 a, in a way it, it is, just like from like what it looks at, it's just like, you know, when you brought up like reading patterns, like there are a lot of folks that don't even read novels, let alone like they like their intention is not getting into knitting and being like, okay, let me open up this pattern and like read this stuff that looks like hieroglyphics. Right. It's another language. Yeah. You know, it's definitely another language. So like that, that, like what I try to do is make sure that the things that I'm showing you, it's so approachable. It's almost like you're just going to a place, but you know, even if you've never been there before, you kind of know how things are going to happen. You kind of, and that brings down a lot of like angst and, 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 you know, worry and apprehension. And that's how you open the door for people to do what they want to do. Cause that's the end goal. I always start with the end in mind, not like, okay, you're here. Let's start here. No, you want this. Here's how we get to this. Yes. Let's yeah. go. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll never teach anybody. They'll come in and be like, well, what do you want to make? Right. I'm never going to start anybody with washcloths because if you're not excited about what you're making, you are not going to follow through. So did you learn the tubular bind off? From Willie or no, but I I think I found you through my investigation of the tubular bind off. So like I'm oh. also well, even Ellen, like I'm super passionate about like the finishing and the details of finishing. Okay. And I think um tubular in itself is just something I'm so passionate about because it just looks so good. It just yeah, it like does. the it's flow and yeah. like how I got into it was it's like I an infinity pool. 
Yes, <laughs> it is. And I, I was doing, is it a, a folded ham? Neck? Yeah, we did a turned ham on the A neck. turned ham. And so I wanted to mirror that on my cast off on the bottom ribbing. And sure. so that's how I got into tubular. But then sure. I think like tubular has just been something that I constantly like, I don't know. I think the algorithm just knows that I'm into it. And so I think that's how I found you. There you go. Um, but it's, I, I love how much you're into like those details. Like, yeah, there's the making of the fabric and that's huge and that's important, but I feel like the finishing and it, it I mean, that's a huge part of your shop in itself, but I just, I think that's why I connected so much with, with the, what you're putting out there because it's just aside from the fact of how excited you are it's just like you are like you're spending so much time you should also spend the time if you want also finishing it nicely and i just love that absolutely and and like um that I, what my main pitch is like why do so much why worry about the cast on and worry about getting the stitches right and then you get to the end and the end just doesn't look the same. We're knitting for the aesthetic. And if you have a certain amount of like skill set and willingness to go the distance, you can achieve that aesthetic. There's a price for everything. If you're willing to pay the yeah. price for the aesthetic, you will have that aesthetic for if it takes you 10 hours, whatever. If you're trying to like bind off like a sweater or something like that, and you did it top down, you got to get 300 some stitches on a two minute bind off. More power to you, but you only got to do that one time, right? Yeah. And you'll be able to marvel at it forever. People who want to do that real quick, you get to see that old ugly, braided up, regular bind off. I'm just being real. Even if people don't think of that as ugly, it has a certain aesthetic to it. And if well, you're you okay know. with it, then it's fine. Yeah. But you'll always know. You'll well, always really. think back that like, man, I, I went really, really fast. I wanted to get it finished. I'm a product, I'm a product knitter. I want to get it done. Da, 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 da. And now you look at it like, oh yeah, like you can flip it up and be like, yeah, you made that. Yeah, you know, I always say that good finishing is the difference between, wow, that's a gorgeous sweater, and, oh, I see you've taken up knitting. Bam. Get on. Bingo. Bingo. Right? Yeah. I mean, because people it's make true. beautiful stuff, and they do all this beautiful yes. color work, and then they sew it together, and it looks like Frankenstein's monster. Hey. Which is why people don't like to do, and everybody, everybody on this, they know that I am a seamed, bottom-up, classic construction girl, right? Because they fit better. They look better. Um, I'm just That's where you came from, for sure. And yes, and I'm old school. Well, I'm also hooked. I'm, <laughs> I'm old school, too, now. Yeah, so. you're you're an old soul. <laughs> so well, this, I this piece was there. a piece up, too. You know, I, I, it was the Icelandic uh, yoke sweater. So I it went bottom-up. had the hook in the sleeves and everything. So How do yeah. you like that? How'd you like doing that? It's different. Um, it's it's you, you, it's just something that you just gotta like accept. You know what I mean? Because I made one for my son. I don't know if you saw it um before, but what I made one. On the floor I, I made one for my son too. Oh, look. Let's go, oh, right? Um, so like, so we can have matching sweaters. He ripped out my my color work. I was like right here, and I was like, I'm not doing the color work again. We're going solid. Boom. Right, knocked it down. So he, I did his first and got that. So like doing it from the bottom up and then like having the hook in, just seeing it like piece together, getting it all fiddly and out of the way, it's almost like you're casting on again. But like once you do that, it's just the way that it fits. Like when it comes down, it's amazing. You know, um, it's definitely a different fit. Like you know, I've done like the my cable sweater had the um, the the boxy kind of um short. Uh, sleeves, I forget what they're called. And then, like, you got the classic raglans. Everybody can't fit a, fit a raglan the same. It doesn't fit on the same vessel the same. You know, some people need to have set-in sleeves or cap sleeves or or something yeah. like that. Or, you know, you got to piece I it mean, up. Yoke sweaters are meant to be knit that way. I mean, yoke mm -hmm. sweaters are designed to be knit in the round and constructed that way. So I'm good with that. You know, you've got a really great compliment here. Oh, not that one. Ida loves yeah. you too, but this is Suzanne. She's gonna sign up for Instagram just because of you. You have oh, to. That's <laughs> love. Thank you. <laughs> so and this is my girl Ida. She loves. She loves yoke sweaters. Mwah, I love you, Ida. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So what? Um, like I said, you're out there teaching all these things that are really scary. Yes. What's next? What do you think? What else? What else is really scary that you think is like, oh my gosh? I just put a poll out um, for you know what people want because like you know if I'm going to be a man of service, I need to know what the people who I'm serving want. So um, 
<clears throat> by a landslide was garments, right? Garments, sweaters, cardigans, things like that that's going to fit around the body. And it's more of the things that are that seem complicated that people don't want to spend a lot of time on increasing decreasing short rows wrapping turns those kinds of things finishing there's like you were saying like those are the things that like people are like focused on a lot so i try to do do like you know bang for your buck time wise um the next thing i'm gonna do is gonna be kind of like a knit along it's not gonna be like your traditional knit along because i'm no means traditional right i'm still gonna have like my 90 second videos we're gonna basically do a whole sweater together it's going to be a free pattern that way i'm not like being hounded by people with like copyright and trademark issues and everything like that i'm trying to get stuff to the people stop trying to stop me people be trying to stop people i don't like that um i'm trying to help don't do me like that um so um i'm gonna do that i'm still have 90 second videos but it's gonna encompass all of these little elements of like sweaters it's gonna be because um, the top down sweater we're gonna start we're gonna do rapid turns out the gate like bam like I, I got the pattern and everything i got my little bit of yarn already ready to go and every time that we get to like a place, it's like a segment. Like we're not gonna sit there for like an hour, hour and a half, like watching somebody knit, like knit with me. Like people ain't got time for that, right? And it just doesn't go in line with like my brand. Like my brand is like short, sweet, to the point. I get what I get. I'm out. I can go back to knitting. That's what it's about. So it, it'll probably be like um, eight or ten segments, um, start to finish, just finishing the whole sweater, and it's gonna cover all those things. And we're gonna have a 90 second video where we cover the wrapping terms and how it incorporates into the sweater. When we do the sleeves, right? When we put the sleeves back on, right? And we do like all of the all of the stuff. And we'll be able to cover that, but in such a way that they can follow along only at the parts where they want to. You know how YouTube has like those little things on there where it has it's already cut off in the segments. You can kind of like hit to the certain time. I want to go here now. I want to go here now. That's gonna be me, but just every video. That way you don't have to sit there and try to scroll and uh, touch the thing. Eh, eh. Oh, I missed it. Oh, I gotta pick up. Oh, I lost it again. Uh, stop. How <laughs> long are you planning? How long are you planning the knit along to be? Do you think? Um. I'm going to plan. It's going to be as long as it takes me to do the sweater. And since I'm kind of like going to obsess over it, like I'm looking to get this done two weeks or inside of two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Two weeks, two weeks knit along. That's cool. Yep. I just got a question for you. Let's go. Oh, I'm not familiar with the red presence. So what's that about? Okay. So the things that I have like online, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you have to fund the dream and um, everything just can't be like 90 second stuff. So I offer, Nine, uh, not 90 seconds. I can't stay on that 90 seconds. I, <laughs> I offer one on one private um, knitting uh, sessions and um, I have a flyer about it. And basically, it's whatever you want to do. You pay the money for the hour and we do whatever you want to do. I have my entire studio up here. I pretty much have the same yarn that you have or similar, the same type of needles or similar, everything. I'm going to mirror you. We go back and forth and I'm doing the thing with you. And like that's real time. I can stop when you say stop. Go when you say go, go back and do this when you go back and do this. People have been having a lot of, cause it's real, it's real time, it's humans, right? Rather than like it being on a screen and they don't have, never have to put their knitting down, right? Like it's it's very interactive and catered to the person for that time. So we maximize that time. So like, that's like the biggest thing that I, like that I offer. Um, I do um, also uh, sell things online like merch. You know, I, I have this on online i have hoodies i have uh shirts those kinds of things still working on supply chain issues um supply chains and trying to get like things to me mm. and stuff like that so um that's pretty much my web presence and instagram of course you know trying to just like be like you know the the knitter like next door or like you know somebody that you can like always be be a part of and like ask questions about you know and like really be that approachable type of person you know and um i reply pretty fast and I'm just uh, looking to serve the community. Best way I know how. That's awesome. Do you want to talk about uh, your favorite yarn? What's your favorite yeah. yarn, Willie? Let me, just, well, let me just lead you through this. I think, I think <laughs> you like acrylic, right? You're a red heart acrylic. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'm not going front over that heart, right? I got some of that stuff in my studio right now. It has its use. It has its purpose. It's like all yarns have their purpose, right? But I would have to say, like, you know, my, my, my favorite yarn, um, as far as, like, brand goes, I, I love Clint Hill Cashmere. I'm a huge fan Clint of Clint Hill Cashmere. Cashmere. Yes, yes. Hill yes. Cashmere. I have a couple of Clint Hill Cashmere things, like, up here. You know, that hat that I just showed you with the Merlot and the Cognac. That's Rebecca's favorite color, Cognac. Uh. I just right? love it. Got the Merlot here. Um, I'm a big fan. I uh, feature all of the patterns that I've made. I also sell patterns on my on my website as well. Um, 
all the patterns yes, that I made. And Becky said you wrote your first pattern, your first hat pattern. She yes. helped you with that. Oh my God. Clinton Hill Cashmere. Every pattern, every pattern that I um that I write is featured in Clinton Hill Cashmere. I have four hat patterns. So I have nostalgia. Um, this is this is nostalgia. This is in the bespoke. I, I have it the that same one. in the DK version. And I have ubiquity. So ubiquity is um a reversible um kind of hat, like kind of similar to the um the Musselberg. Um, and it's 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 um, made in Clinton Hill cashmere as well. So I'm a big fan of cashmere. The my mascot's the goat on my logo. That's yeah. where cashmere comes from. <laughs> I'm a Capricorn, so that's a goat. There so, you go. And plus, I'm you're the goat, right? The greatest of all time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You said it, not me. Soon enough, though. <laughs> you said it, not me. Yeah, Good but you let us right into it. <laughs> what can I say? Guilty. Guilty. I can't get over the knitter next door. That is the best. Right. <laughs> right? Let's go. We'll keep it, we'll keep it positive, go. right? So I moved in <laughs> next door to this knitter, and uh, all they do is knit all day, and everybody's thinking it's this little old gray-haired lady, and it's you, dude. It's me. <laughs> <You're> like, bam! <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise that when they see me. Oh, goodness. <laughs> what a surprise. With your cashmere. So uh, we had a question. This lady wants to know what you recommend if you can't wear wool. And alpa even alpaca is itchy. Even you haven't touched is. this, babe. This this is not itchy. It's so I want to feel fabric in this because I haven't swatched it yet. Yes. I want to feel yes. it, 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 it feels amazing. This. I would definitely recommend um, you know, because like my wife's the same way. Um, she's very much allergic to like things irritating her skin. And if you like really break it down science wise, it's just really like the the thickness of the fiber and like how like crazy like the, the fibers on the microscopic level are sticking out and everything. Cashmere just might be for you. Your skin has very high taste, very high taste. So like you know, try try something of like a smoother nature. Um, Pima cotton, Sue Pima cotton, those are definitely good ones. But they have different characteristics. Um, like um, unlike wool, silks are definitely a good one as well. Just depends on what you're using it for. Because if you are thinking about a garment, it's very important to think about what fiber is going to be used to make that garment because it's going to behave differently. That's very mm -hmm. important for people to know about. So anything that's going to be like, you know, scratchy or itchy, that's going to be like a protein fiber. You might want to try a, um, a cellulosic fiber. You might want to try a blend of, of, of some things. And um, definitely start with cashmere. You know, if you're going to go all out, might as well. Give it a shot. It, it, you, it'll change the way you see yarn. For sure. Yeah, and there's there's cashmere. Is that Susan who said that? Yeah, there's cashmere and there's cashmere, right? You know, something like this Clinton Hill, I'll tell you right now, very long staple. And it only has to be a particular micron count to be considered cashmere. And the finer the micron, the softer the yarn, the smoother the yarn. You want a worsted spun so that it doesn't have a little bit sticking out to prickle you. So something like a very nice worsted spun cashmere like this. Clinton Hill cashmere is very beautiful. I'll probably start carrying this. Why not? Why, Why not? not it, right? It's because as soon as they touch it, and not like one of my little like sales hacks, because like I study marketing and behavioral psychology and stuff like that as well. When they have it in their hands, it's halfway theirs. So true. Yeah. You just have to touch it. <laughs> Do you think that's part of the reason you fell in love with knitting? Because I know you said like when when you first got into it, you didn't have like you were a college student, like you didn't necessarily have the funds to go get like the nicest yarn that money can buy. But is that like, are you very tactile? I'm curious why, because I I had the same reaction as soon as I started knitting, it was like, boom, I, I have to do this every night. I'm obsessed. What, what kind of content can I find on this? Like, what do you think made you fall in love so fast? The fact that I knew this, because I'm very like, interactive with my hands and i just believe you know as like you know someone growing in the world as a father as a man as a brother as a husband the more skills i can possess the more value i have the more utilization utility that i have and i can be i can move more fluid among like in the world in society and i'm able to bring value and when you're able to bring value from like an economic standpoint you're the one that's going to be paid. You're the one that's going to be the last one to be considered to be fired anywhere because you bring way more value than you take. And that's very important when it comes to like, you know, being competitive in the market, right? Who's going to watch you? Who's the one that's going to feel like what I'm giving them is a steal based on the money that they're paying, like 50 bucks. 
done for what I'm getting. Like I can leave. I'm going to make a hat right now. Like that's the kind of excitement that comes around. So like for me being a teacher, I've always said to myself, if I know it, I can show it. If I know how to do something, I can get somebody else to know how to do it. But I can't do that if they're not willing. If they're unable, I'm, uh, I'm, I won't accept can't. Like it's not an inability. It's an unwillingness. And if it's an unwillingness, I can respect that. Like it, it ain't for everybody, right? But to say that like, oh, I can't do this because I don't know how to do this. How willing are you? Because I'm probably more willing than you are. I'll give you some of mine. Let's go together. <laughs> Yes. Yes. You got. You got to <laughs> want to do it. You know. You got to want to no. do it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I. I feel like. Um, yeah, I feel like sometimes there is just a natural talent. Like some people pick up like guitar super easily, or some people pick up knitting super easily. But I feel like no matter how much natural you talent you have, even those like even the most amazing guitarists and knitters in the world, like there's a lot of hours that go into it. You can't just be naturally good at something and then be like, well, that's it. That's all. Like, you, There's still so much practice, so much time. And, yes. um, and so much to learn. You can't so ever much to learn. stop learning. You can't ever say, oh, I've been knitting for 30 years. I know everything there is to know. Yes. Uh, no, that's, that's <laughs> when you just put your knitting needles down because you so think untrue. you know everything. You don't. <laughs> well, I'm curious too, like people who like you are so so obsessed with it and spend so much time with it. I'm curious, like what new techniques and new things are going to be discovered? Because obviously there has to be things about knitting and fabric that we don't know yet. I don't know. It's just exciting for me. To that's see that's like exactly right. And like, for me, that's one of the, one of the main reasons, like one of the main things that, that derives from the vision, right? Cause if everybody know, not everybody, but like people who are willing to do the stuff for knitting, if they're willing to learn the skills to make what they want, the amount of creativity that is locked in a lot of people's heads that you can't, like that they are just unable to put out into the physical because they don't have the skills, the bridge yes. from like their head to their hands to do it. That's where all the creativity is. That's where all the new discoveries are. And the skill set is the key to unlocking that. So I'm contributing to that real time. There are people that have said that they've been knitting for 50, 60 years and they've never done double double knitting before. What? Okay. I saw your video on double knitting. What is double knitting used for? Like all I can think about is a pocket. Like what, <laughs> what can, is it? You can use it for just about like anything that like you can make flat. You can make a long scarf out of it. You can put like different oh, stuff in there. You can make like um like Stacey Perry from Very Pink Knit. She has um a Harry Potter um bookmark. It's made of fabric and it's got like the Gryffindor joint on there. It's got like, it's like double contrast. If it's like red and I don't know if the colors are the same, like red and gold. Is that, is that Gryffindor? Yeah. Not really. Okay. So, so I like, mean, they I, have like I, the red I, yeah. and black and then flip it. It's like the contrast, like the total opposite, like the negative of it. Like you can do anything that you want with it. It's just what is in your mind that you want that to look like. We start there and then we work backwards. What skills do I need now? because I know what I want now. And that's a lot of people. Yeah. That was the first time I'd heard of it. So I really? was like, yeah. So Jenny did a class on that. It was pretty cool. Yeah. So, I mean, and there's, it's, I think double knitting is really cool. <clears throat> I don't know if you've seen this or heard of this, but there's this scene, I think it's in Anna Karenina where she's knitting sock and she's doing it double knitting. And at the end of it, she pulls the one out of the other. So she's knit Man. them two at a time. Stop. Two at a time. Right? Is that so cool? I think that, that is just... amazing. Right? And it's funny because like we can't I, I can't find like a pattern for it or anything. I don't know if it's like some kind of well-guarded secret, like bushy baked beans. I don't know what it is. Like well, there's two different kinds of double knitting, and one makes a, a fabric that's connected, and one makes yes. a fabric that's like a pocket. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's. I'm gonna. I'll re-energize Jenny on this, and we'll have a class on that again. And I will maybe, take it. maybe Willie will will have this figured oh. out by then. We can. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, it'll be super fun. But I mean, there are, and I think, I think honestly that. Tell me if you if you agree. Um, skills and techniques kind of go in cycles. Like when I was first learning to knit, I couldn't find enough information about short rows. And I wanted to learn how to do short rows so that 
because I couldn't ever get my shoulder seams to look right. I wanted to learn how to do short rows so that I could do a three needle bind off. And I couldn't find information on short rows. This is before the days of the internet, of course. Right. And so I'm like looking through all of these things and I'm like these, oh my gosh. these tiny little bits of information that I'm able to glean. And now, I mean, short rows are like everybody does them for scarves and decorative and, you know, whatever. Um, same with entrelock, you know, it, it oh, goes yeah. in cycles and fads of what's, what's interesting, what's in style, what people are doing or not doing. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. I, I totally agree. Like it, it, it's the trendsetters, you know? And like, you know, when I'm, when I was thinking about like my business, I'm thinking about like, you know, or like my vision and how I was going to contribute to the community. There are already people that are basically the tastemakers for knitting. Like they, like they're where they are, they're, they're established and they're the ones, if I put this out, everybody's going to flock and, and do that thing. Right. And when they want to make that thing, that's when the short rows come in or the entourage comes in because, oh, I seen so-and-so at the fashion show, you know, and they had in the collection and they had this going this way, but it like bent and curved and they had this shaping going on. Like, how do you do that? The question started and then those things start to get there. People started recreating or reverse engineering and breaking it down. And that's how that information started to spread with the, because it was the skill set to make said thing. Right. Like the said thing was like the X and now they went backwards to try to find X. Solve for X. <laughs> Solve for X. You know, that's, that's exactly what it's about. So I always figured if I can get people to make the things that they want and the things that they want, just so happen to be the things that the designers were putting out. I'm doing the designers a favor. Yeah. They, that's a, do that's that. a they need to sit point. back and just have people just buy patterns. Absolutely. That's a huge point because you look at somebody like Andrea Mowry, who's doing, she decided she was going to do brioche and, and then everything's brioche, right? And I think she definitely drove the demand for that skill set. Yes, absolutely. You know, and like people started making it out of this or started making more hats or started making more scarves and more cows and affinity scarves and things. You know, um, people are going to want to do what they want to do with their knitting regardless. You know, maybe one day, as this keeps going, people are not going to need patterns. They can just make their own thing because that's what it's going to come to when you get enough skill set. But like now that there's something that looks nice. Somebody already did all the work. It already got tested. It already got published. All I got to pay like five, six bucks. Great. I'll have it. And then they'll have the pattern. And then they're like, oh, I want to modify it this way because you yeah. have that freedom. People want the freedom, right? They don't want to be boxed into this. I just want to make this and I, I can only make this because this is all I know how to do. Knitting is not about that. Knitting is about making what you want, having that freedom, because there may be some other places in their lives, maybe no other place in their life where they can actually have that. That's important. That is so profound. Yeah, that is that is really profound. I think you're absolutely right. I know that a lot of people just make what the pattern says because they're too afraid not to, mm -hmm. you know, and I I am about empowering people. I want you to understand what I'm telling you to do. I want you to know why not just do this. Don't ask questions, you know, let's understand it so that, so that you know why you're doing it and then you have a better sense of it. But yeah, if that's the place in your life where you can be empowered and make decisions and take control. Yeah. That's huge. Isn't it? It's the, it's the best thing. And that's like, and I don't make patterns because I try not to be like a designer because there's there's, there's enough designers. I, they no, don't no, 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 Willie. Work. You need to make a double knit hat pattern, honey. You need to I'm, do I'm, it and I'm you need to put your little on, on it. it. I don't know. That might be the last one. Who knows? Um, but like, Never the say never. I, <laughs> I, I know. I said that. And then I got, I said that on number one and now I got four. Like, you know, I like, <laughs> I just can't get away. Right. But like all of the patterns that I have, you know, you only learn like maybe one or two top three skills in that hat to achieve that hat and the whole purpose of you paying the money to buy the pattern you're paying like that money is investing in yourself to learn these skills so you can make what you want because maybe there was a technique in that pattern of my pattern that that you needed for another pattern that you couldn't do or didn't want to do or you were scared to do and now you can do that thing it's all about driving to do what you want Regardless, right? I've turned the whole like system on its head, so to speak. I win when you need me less. <laughs> right, right, absolutely. It's like parenting. You want to make sure your kids don't need you anymore because <laughs> yes. you're not going to be around forever. And, and, <laughs> and they choose to be around me because, like, you know, they want to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, you want to butter them up because I, I'm, I'm going to need you to take care of me when I'm old and feeble, right? So <laughs> it's just so, one of those things. So here's a way for you to think about pattern designing. Okay, 
when somebody sees what you've made and they want to make it, you're serving them by giving them the directions on how to create the thing that you created. That's correct. Like that, right. that, 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 that's that, why like you that, need that, to write the patterns. <laughs> yeah, I, I got. I mean, I, I write the patterns, and like, and that's and that's exactly what I write the patterns for. You know, like I want you to, to take away those things and um, have something to show for it. Like you invested in yourself, and you invested this time. Why not? Why not have a hat? Oh, <laughs> uh, why not? Why not? I got a whole pile of them right here. It's ready to go. Like you know, because I, I I didn't know what was gonna happen. I got prepared. I, I don't know. I don't know. So like you know With what like. For, for our interview, like maybe oh. we wanted to demo things. Oh, well, is there something you want to show? Show us everything. Well, we want to see all the things. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. I, I didn't know if that was like going to be part of it. Because I remember we were on Instagram and we were like talking with um um Kristen. Yeah, Kristen's on here tonight. I'm going to see her. Hey, what's uh, up? Friday. So um, the one that she was talking about, the Every Which Way Cow. It's our retreat. I got it right oh, here. Oh, look at what that. What is that? What is that? This is the Every Which Way Cow. I see you, Kristen. What's up? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Got to shout her out because, like, like in my early stages of like trying to get into the um into the business, this is what like you know I we we connected, we were vibing and everything. I was like, oh, let me see these patterns. I'm gonna try this. Those other two hats, the sassafras hat and the um the uh one the the counter three, I gifted those. So like you know, I made them out some pretty good yarn. I gifted those, so they're out in the universe somewhere. But this is the every which way cow. It's made out of Australian hand dyed um. 50-50 wool silk. So that's the background color. That's like the colors and stuff like that. And then the black is Italian um, cashmere and silk. So oh, that's there beautiful. every which way. And um, I actually went out and I got it. Um, I got, oh, I got look satin uh, lined inside of it. I didn't do this. I didn't take credit for this. I sent this to another small business because, you know, I'm trying to support small business. Yes. Right? Her name is Aisha. Um, so um, I definitely uh, hooked her up. You can stop touching it. <laughs> I want Wait, that. Willie, is that stranded? Or what is this? This is, yes, this is uh, some stranded color work. So, like, yeah, you can't see the, the floats. That's why I had the satin in there. But um, it is uh, stranded color work. So, you know, um, just uh, doing that, just making sure that you follow the pattern. It's a, it's a paid pattern on Ravelry. Um, every Which Way Cow, Kristen Clement. Um, she's dope. Queen City Fibers. She, you're going to see her on Friday. She'll be here. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, so I got I, I got that. You know, um, I've had this for for years. It, it's amazing. It slips and slides out of here. It's got it's got good drink. I'll put it on. Right nice you, job too. How did you find the um the small business owner who did who does that um lining that you had? Done? That like, so um she's actually the daughter of Busy Peach. Um, I call her Auntie. So um we we've um been um vibing you know since like VA for years now, and um she sells you know um cotton and um tinsel and other like plant-based fibers and stuff she's a hand dyer indie dyer her daughter um does the satin stuff and she does like um sweaters and things like that with like um a satin lining in the hood i got one of those oh, as well and i just like lovely. partnered with her i reached out to her i was like hey can you do these things so she did a few hats for me i have another one right here um so it's got the same purple in it stop yeah, so like this one right here just has like a real interesting story. My son put on the pom pom. <laughs> you can see it's not even like oh, so cute. He's just, what is like, that? Is it wrapped it around. So he put on the pom pom. <laughs> My wife dyed this sparkle merino yarn here, and I made the hat. So like this is like a full on small business collaboration kind of deal going on here. So I love that. It's it, it's, it's everything, and that's what knitting and that's what being in this community does for you. You know what I mean? Like everybody gets get shine everybody has their their way of doing things and being in the community contributing to the community you know um trying to make a living off this community and stuff like that and we're all living in this commerce as an economic movement and everybody's winning everybody's happy and and doing what they love and that's what it's about at the end of it all you bet absolutely i think too you know that when you are showing all the scary things you know when, when you can help somebody master something that they're like, oh, that's, that's so hard, that's brioche, or that's double knitting, or that's tubular, or whatever, and, and they think, oh, I can't do it, but then they try, and they see you do it, and they work with it, and they master that, I think that's so, the, the empowering feeling and the win on that pervades every aspect of your life, yes. you yeah. know? 
you know, when you've mastered a thing, when you've conquered a challenge, whether it's knitting or whatever, you feel like you feel like almost this high, you know, like you can do anything. And I think that's what is I mean, not just there's so many things that go into your success and your popularity. But I, I see that as like part of why you're so awesome is that you give people the opportunity to feel so good about themselves. You teach them stuff yeah. that they thought was maybe too hard to do, but you empower them to do that and you show them that it's doable and you give them that sense of accomplishment that they can take away and have in their whole life. Yes. Maya Angelou said it best. Like people may forget, you know, what you said, or they may forget what you did to them, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Ever. 100%. They'll never forget how you made them feel. And that's what I always wanted to take away from, from those kinds of things, because with the right type of support, you'll, you, you're invincible. You feel invincible. You feel like you could do anything. And right. if I put enough, and I always tell myself, like, if I could put enough stuff in front of you to show you how easy it actually is, and actually do like a video and show you with your real time. Like, this is all I did. And 90 seconds really does that because like, you really don't have much in the way of like distraction, like minute and a half, you got that much attention, you can hold it for that long, right? The long, scary pharmaceutical commercials are longer than that. Come on now. Right? So like, that's why I gotta be like super, like, you know, animated and everything like that. Like, I gotta, I gotta catch you, I gotta keep you. Right. And then, you know, you have it Then they try and like you can see in like the comments in a lot of my videos, like I've never learned this. Oh, man, it's that easy. What was I doing all this time? Da, da, da. Like, And it is like they just never had it look like that or show it like that before. And I've always said, like, that's the difference. Like, just because you know something doesn't mean you can teach it. And, you know, yeah. so true. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I'm not saying, like tooting my own horn or anything like that. But like I was legit a teacher. Like um, I was. I wasn't chosen to be a teacher when two of my college friends went into this uh, program called Teach for America. We did the whole little thing and they didn't even want to be teachers. One wanted to be like an ergonomist. He was in the Air Force. Another one wanted to be a public defender. And I was the only one that wanted to be a teacher. The only one. And I was the one that didn't get chosen. Like, Aww. how do you think I made this somebody feel? You know? But yeah. like, again, teachers always find a way. So like, whatever I told myself, whatever I did when it came to teaching, when people walked away, I wouldn't even have to explain what I've done for them because they've already done it with 10 other people. You got to come see this person. He, he told me how to do it. Look, I can do it now because of him, right? That's legacy. That's what I want to be remembered for. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. hundred percent. Absolutely. Thank you, Ellen. I love you too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she put a nice comment in. <laughs> You're a darling. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of people with teaching that if you don't really, really know it, then you can't really teach it because people need to learn it different ways. And you can't just say the same thing over again, only louder, because that is not how, that is not how people learn. Yeah. Right. No. You have to, you know, if they're not getting it this way, you have to come around this way and maybe come this way and maybe, you know, maybe tell a little story, maybe make an analogy. And I, I always do that with like the stitches or like little girls, or, you know, holes in hands. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, stupid yes, sayings. The little anybody, girls. anybody who's learned to knit from me is, is, knows all the stupid sayings, but they'll never forget, you know, it's yeah. the same. And with it you. works and it works. Yes. And that's what it's about. Like, it doesn't matter, like how like silly it may sound. What's the real end goal? It works. You know, right. like I said something yeah. about like, you know, when, like the, the one video that like really caught fire with the toe up video, whoops and whops. Those aren't even words. And barks and burps. Barks and burps. <laughs> like, you know, like that's an actual like term, you know? And like yeah. when I was doing my, um, the double knitting video, find your buddy, everybody knew yes. it was done. We it knew. It was the cutest thing ever. Right, find your buddy. Oh, there's my buddy. Well, okay, no, nope, you're not my buddy. Okay, move. <laughs> and like people understood. It yes. gave an emotional response and, and you retained the information that kept you moving, right? Because yes. double knitting is such a cerebral thing. Like, what do you mean it's gonna be the right side on both sides and it's stocking and and what am I supposed to do? And like, you just get so lost in the sauce, but when you see it, you you can't unsee it, right? You see what, what I'm you doing? Like I'm adding I'm adding in mnemonic devices, you know, because people like like that. Like my little my little boy he has ADHD, right? Like I have to like do do all kinds of things really fast, like you know, and like have like sound effects, you know, the ascending, <whistles> descending, <whistles> loop de loop. <whistles> like it's got to have those things. That's how he's gonna stay hooked. And I'm my son's not the only one in in the country in the world that has those things that he needs. They need to keep their attention.
right? So I add that in, I mix that into the learning and it, it works beautifully, you know, cause like I, I'm doing like four or five things that like hit all those intelligences to get to the same place. Something's gonna work. One's not gonna work, five might. Right, <laughs> and you still have to to hear it five times, you know? Yeah. And you if it's 90 it seconds, it's not gonna like it's not gonna be like a huge pain because you can just always just hit watch again if it's a real right. Watch again, 90 seconds. Watch again, 90 seconds. Got a little bit more now. 90 seconds, right? At this point, you're not even five minutes in, and you've learned something that you, it took you years to learn, right? No more podcasts that 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 are tutorials, right? No more 17 minute long videos, right? I'm not <laughs> dogging nobody. I'm just being real because I've seen the same videos that all them other folks have seen. I've yeah. seen them. You've seen yeah, them. Yeah, I need to cut right? up my videos. <laughs> I cover too much stuff in my videos. I'm going to cut them up and I'm going to make some reels. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody has their thing, you know what I mean? And I, I I never wanted my stuff to be like the 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 thing that took over something else. Like, just like, you know, vitamins. You can't live off vitamins. You can't live off supplements. That's exactly what they are. They're supplements. It's there to supplement what you already know to keep you moving, right? It's not like the thing that's going to be like, oh, I, here's here's how you do it. Here's how you do this one thing to do the rest of the things. Right. It's just like so, vitamin A, no problem. What is next for Willy Nilly? <sighs> next thing is um, I'm working on longer form videos and like, you know, you can only go so long after like 90 seconds. So like now it's like 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> That's boring 10, 15 minute videos, you're just uh, dissing? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, that's my long. You're gonna be starting to make those now, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that, that—that's there. Um, you know, maybe like a Patreon, maybe a subscription service. Now it's just really time to like um monetize the service in such a way that more people are willing to get behind it. And um, because like you know, the videos and stuff are are great and things like that. But like you know, that's gonna that like that has its end somewhere. So I'm already like ahead of that. Like I can only do so many 90 second videos. So, and then, you know, from there, you know, if I do get like on like a partnership with like some company, some organization, and you know, I can travel the country and show more people how to knit and things like that. And like be in person oh. and stuff like that, that would be like the the, the best thing um, right now. Cause you know, like I'm, I'm a full-time manager, you know, dad, husband, all that kind of stuff. And um, like one day, like I'm looking for this to be the thing that I do for a living, you know, and there's gotta yeah. be a lot more people that I impact. Um, and I just need like a thousand super fans. Cause you know, that's what um, Seth Godin said. You get a thousand super fans, you can make a living. <laughs> you got a hundred thousand super fans right there on Instagram, honey. <laughs> yes. And, and, and I hope they are for sure. You know what I mean? Cause the super fan, anything I put out, they'll just buy no questions asked. It's almost mindless. It's scary, but like, I, I, I love it and I'm, and, and I'm happy for them. I, I'll never steer them wrong. <laughs> No, of course you wouldn't. And that's the thing, you know, your your enthusiasm is infectious, but your integrity is evident. And it's lovely. It's just lovely. It has been such a treat to I chat know. with you. It has. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. You're fangirling. I've been okay. so excited, <laughs> Willie. Sorry. I have. I've been so excited. So thank you. This was like so fun for me. Well, yeah, I'm so glad, you know. Too. Tell more people, encourage more people to, to get into the craft. It'll do something for them, you know, like their relatives may want something and nothing hits nothing hits the same as something that's handmade from a relative because there's love in every one of those stitches and there's yeah. literally life force, life energy. Yep. Like it took yep. time and time is life. Life energy was was spent in constructing like a piece like this, you know, and it was made from a certain it, like it has a story. You know, like this has a story. It came from this place. I got it here. I spent my last dimes on it and I made it. I wanted you to have it before it got really cold. Here you go. They wear it. They think of you. It's an emotional response. They'll never forget that. That's what knitting does for people. And you thought about them the whole time that you were knitting it. So you're Every working stitch. all of this great energy into a piece. I believe that pieces have an energy and a life force. Absolutely. You know? Because, I mean, that's what that's what was literally imbued into the hair. It's a part of the hair. <laughs> I know. Absolutely. So is that your little man back there that I hear? Yes, probably my daughter. My little boy's oh. probably playing uh, video games. My little girl's down there running them Aw. <laughs> so do you teach them to knit? 
if they had the attention span to stay around, you know, but they definitely play dress up with like the giant creative hats and they're running around putting thousands yeah. of hats on at a time. And, you know, they're like, I'm going outside. You know? And then like they do a little fashion show down the catwalk. I put like fashion show music on for them and we're doing our thing and we're having fun. So I love it. And like, they'll, they'll, I love it. I love it. So cute. And items and, so I love it. Like everybody in my block can have a hat. I, I, that's how many hats I have. You know, like I donate them. I give the them away. hat. I'm Not giving a couple of those away, you know, only for the special ones. They come in a little bag. Like, hey, I, I want you to have one. Go ahead. Take which one you want. Knitworthy people. Yeah. So Absolutely. tell everybody where they can find you. If they don't already know where they can find you, what they'll see on your website, how they can get with you. Great. All right. Cool. So Instagram is the place where I am the most um, active. You know, I just think that's where everybody is. Um, I'm on YouTube. I'm slowly getting my YouTube up there. It's the same handle, Willy Nilly Knits. Jump on it and, I, and holler at me. I'm on TikTok, Black Miss Frizzle. Yeah. So that's yes. me. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go. Right? Right? Yeah. Stop. Black With Miss the Frizzle. matching set. Let's go. With the matching set. Yes. Take chances. Make mistakes and get messy. Let's go. That's um, right. So Let's I'm, I'm, I'm on right I'm on Insta I'm on TikTok for that. Um, you can find me on my website, Willy Nilly Knits Square dot site. That's my website. You know, you can purchase classes there. I have a bunch of links all over the place there that you can like, you know, book classes and you can email me willy nilly knits at gmail.com. It's all pretty streamlined. So you willy nilly knit something was you're gonna find me. So like um you can DM me, let me know what's going on and um, you know, let, let, let's get you where you want to be. <laughs> This is so awesome. Thank you so much. I hope you guys all go out there and buy some willy nilly stuff, buy a hoodie, you know, yeah. wear something that says we out here. Yeah. We out here. I love here. it. I love it. I love it. We out here. We out here. <laughs> we out so here. Good. We all out here, babe. I know. You know Man, big time, are. right? We all are. Thank you again for your time. It was absolutely lovely to chat with you and laugh with you. You are the bomb, man. <laughs> and thank you guys, all of you, for being here. I appreciate your time. And I will see you next week. So thank you so much, Willie. Don't go away. Bye. But I'm going to end the broadcast. But we will see you next time. And it's been great. All righty. <laughs>